All right, welcome to chapter 6.2 video. Let's start with a little review here. So we talked last time a lot about growing bacteria. So you are interested in determining the total number of viable cells in a bacterial culture. Which method of counting would you choose for the most accurate results? Is it A, spread plate dilution? B, direct cell counts using a microscope? C, just looking at the tube? Or D, optical density with a spectrophotometer? Go ahead and pause the video, think about that one. In this case, the best answer would be A, and that's the only one because it's the only one using viable counts. Viable, remember, means able to reproduce and grow, and the spread plate dilutions are the only one that's looking at growth. You could directly count it under a microscope, but unless you had that live dead stain, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. You could look at how cloudy the tube is, but that's not really going to tell you live or dead. Um, and it's really not counting. It's kind of a very rough estimation. Uh, optical density with a spectrophotometer would get you a pretty accurate count, but it wouldn't give you viable because there's dead ones in there as well. So the best answer here is A. So 6.2, uh, we're talking about how bacteria actually grow. We've talked about how we grow them, but what are they actually doing in that growth? So we need to understand the phases of typical bacterial growth, what we call a growth curve. You'll see that. Uh, and then uh, we'll look at how bacteria growth kind of correlates with disease. Okay, so the bacterial growth, right? Well, ultimately, if we break it down, the ultimate goal of any biological organism is to reproduce because that keeps biology going. Um, evolutionarily speaking, your ultimate goal may be different, but uh, from a biological evolutionary standpoint, that is the ultimate goal. Microbes are masters at reproduction. Um, they have phases where they grow and they also have phases where they don't grow. And for bacteria, growth is not what we think of growth, right? Growth is division for bacteria in almost all cases. Um, the cells do get longer or bigger sometimes, but that's generally uh, growth we talk about here means division. And that division is ca uh, called binary fission, right? So binary means two fission splitting apart. One parental cell divides into two identical offspring cells. I said identical, so not always true. Uh, binary fission could be symmetrical, where they are identical, or rarely what we call asymmetrical, where we have something kind of like this stalk forming um, in this budding cell. Generally, it's, it's symmetrical, though. We start with one, and we end up with two identical copies there. So sometimes it's called clonal growth because of that. Now, in nature, the rate that this happens uh, is complicated. There's a lot of factors that influence that. In the lab, it's generally fast-paced, right? We give bacteria everything they want and need to be happy and reproduce quick. So in the lab, we can actually quantify growth. So binary fission is exponential growth. Uh, we start with, in this case, uh, let's say one bacteria. So in this, the population size doubles at a fixed rate. This is under ideal conditions, like in the lab. The fastest, like E. coli and things like that, in the lab, every 20 minutes, they're reproducing. So we start with one bacteria. 20 minutes go by. It reproduces into two. 20 minutes go by, those two become four. Those four become eight. Those eight become 16, so on and so forth. Okay, in, in the real world, right, out in the environment, in your gut, whatever, not in the lab, basically, there are very few bacteria that get enough resources for this maximum growth to occur. So that, that constant time that I used up here, that 20 minutes, that's the quickest, what we call generation time or doubling time. In nature, it can be much longer 
and bacteria might not um, kind of all be synchronized and might not reach this full exponential growth in out there in the real world, right? But it's still very impressive, right? Even if it's a day, right? So you triple this and it goes up to a day. That's a very fast generation time, right? We talked about the human generation time. That's what, nine months, right? And then the organism has to grow to reproductive maturity. We're talking at the earliest, that's like in the early teens, it's theoretically possible. Um, so uh, that, right, whatever, 19, 18, 16 years uh, worth of time compared with 20 minutes to an hour, that's pretty incredible. So that means uh, if we had 10 E. coli, they can lead to bloody diarrhea in about two days in your gut, right? They can get to a high enough level that they can cause those symptoms. Um, so that's pretty quick, right? We start with just 10 E. coli cells and they get to a high enough point where they can make you, this giant organism, have bloody diarrhea. Uh, that's, that's pretty incredible. So we're going to talk about ideal conditions here, okay? Uh, bacterial growth rates depend on temperature, nutrients, pH, all these different things. But here, this scientist is growing a what we call batch culture in a flask. So there's some sort of liquid growth medium in here. This flask is nicely shaped to swirl that. This is a shaker here. It shakes around in circles and constantly aerates it. This will be at a constant temperature that the bacteria love and they have all their favorite nutrients inside here. So they're going to grow the best they can. And that's going to lead to what we call a bacterial growth curve. So this graph we're going to look at it. It's time on the bottom here, and there's no units to it. It's just uh, hypothetical. And on the left, we can see growth number. Now, this is what's called a logarithmic scale. So remember when we talked about dilutions, uh, 10 to the fifth um, is 10 with five zeros. Uh, 10 to the sixth is 10 with six zeros. Uh, 10 to the seventh 10 with seven zeros, so on and so forth. So we're going up by a factor of 10 each time. So this is number of microbes that are in there. Okay, so we're gonna run through the phases. So this is I drop bacteria into that growth medium and start it growing, start it shaking. That's time zero here. The bacteria are going to start with a little bit of a lag. They'll go into exponential or log phase growth then it'll taper off, and finally they'll go into a death decline here. So let's talk about each of these. Now this is a closed system, right? Nothing gets added, nothing gets taken away. Uh, it's not very realistic, it's not like inside of you, but this is uh, under ideal conditions. Okay, let's start with the first one, the lag phase. So what happens? I drop my bacteria into there. Now you might not think about it, right? But Bacteria have to sense their environment, and their environment has just changed. I've taken them from some sort of sample or something like that and put them into a new environment. They need to go and sense. They gotta say, okay, is the temperature right? Do I have all the nutrients I need? Is the pH nice? Okay, in this case, I've dropped them into my little flask. Yeah, it's great, they start to sense that, but that takes time because they're gonna ramp up and prepare to start dividing or growing. You can also think about you eat the contaminated piece of whatever, it goes through your gut. There's a lag phase there as the bacteria senses that it's in a new environment, in this case, you, the host. So this lag phase could be, uh, could be short, could be long, depends on what's there, where it is, the temperature, all these different factors. So here's our lag phase. They're not, they're not actively dividing yet. Once they realize that it's a great environment, they go into the maximum growth rate, the exponential or log phase. Um, so that's that doubling each time, exponential doubling. Um, and this is gonna go on, it's gonna keep going until late in log phase, the density reaches a point where the bacteria, they actually start like bumping into each other and getting really close. They can actually detect one another 
and there's also a drop in the availability of nutrients. This process is called quorum sensing because the bacteria are communicating with one another. They start to realize that things aren't quite perfect anymore because there's too many of them in this small little vessel, right? Remember, it's closed, so no new nutrients coming in. Uh, we then go into what's called the stationary phase where the lack of nutrients and the buildup of waste products starts to inhibit growth. Bacteria actually change what they're doing inside of their cell. They change their physiology to deal with this change. Um, E. coli, they can change their size to be much smaller. We actually kind of saw this in the lab. Uh, the, the ones grown on the plate were really long. The ones grown in the liquid culture were kind of short and stubby. Um, in some species, they might develop what's called an endospore. We'll see that later. But they're changing what they're doing. Um, and then they start to die uh, because there's not enough nutrients. But some weird things happen here. There is always mutation happening at a small, low rate in here. But as the nutrients in the waste build up, some mutations might be advantageous. So it allows some bacteria to grow a little bit better than their neighbors. And so that's why this decline phase is not a strict drop off like this. There's kind of like a long prolonged uh, death phase here. But eventually, if no new nutrients are added, everything in there will die. So those are the four phases. I'd like you to know those and what's going on at each of those. We have lag phase where it's sensing and preparing to uh, start growing. Log phase, maximum growth rate here. Uh, stationary phase, the cells are starting to sense that something's not quite right. No new nutrients, too many of us in here. Um, and then the death phase as they start to die. Okay, so uh, growth cycles are generally recorded in a liquid batch culture uh, where it's ideal. Um, and bacteria, the, the population itself changes what it's doing depending on these different phases of growth. All right, that's it for 6.2.